My name is Roger Foley. I am a person with very serious disabilities and I need the public's help. While I've had some recent success with my constitutional legal case, where I've been offered self-directed funding after being denied for over three years with the help of my lawyer, my case is far from over and my situation remains very precarious and deeply troubling. Because my calls for help domestically have gone unanswered, I've decided it is necessary to take the extraordinary step to make an official complaint through the optional protocol under the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. My safety and the safety of all persons with disabilities in Canada is an intimate and serious danger. As a result, I was invited to attend a private meeting with the Special Rapporteur from the United Nations on April 5, 2019, whom is visiting Canada from Geneva. I have previously shared recordings of hospital staff suggesting that I should end my life under a so-called medically assisted dying, and at the same time coercing me by way of threatening to charge me $1,800 a day. Given the circumstances, I have now decided it is appropriate and necessary to disclose my medical records. All of these documents combined not only reveal that there were attempts made to encourage me towards assisted dying, but also that I was crudely abused, put into forced starvation for weeks, and put into a state of severe acidosis where I almost died. Instead of providing me the help I need to assist me with life, and living with a severe neurological disability that has robbed me of all my mobility and causes substantial suffering. In April of 2018, I was denied access to assistive equipment for essential activities of daily living. As a result, I was forcibly starved and cut off from accessing water, medications, and brass from youths. It brought my body to extreme acidosis where my organs began to fail due to extreme dehydration. I was near death. The forced starvation went on for 20 days and I was not seen by a physician for weeks and I was in a hospital. Only because my lawyer, family, and a doctor from another unit kept advocating for me, I finally gained access to the equipment, supplies, and testing needed to regain my health before it was irreversible. The testing from this new doctor from another unit confirmed that in addition to acidosis and cerebellar ataxia, I had gastroparesis that entire time which staff ignored. There was something even worse that happened to me after I almost died. It is simply outrageous and a serious affront to any concept of fear, play, and decency. The April 2018 hospital staff that refused to provide me with necessary care to live, starved me, and put me into extreme acidosis made up stories against me where there is no physical evidence, rational basis, or justification and somehow the police and Crown decided to prosecute me because I have a disability and are bullying me as well. This is not right and it is an affront to a first society based on decency, equality, and rule of law. I am a patient who is barely hanging on to life and suffering enough with my disabilities. I almost died and was being coerced towards euthanasia. I am being prosecuted in a criminal court by healthcare staff that are refusing to provide me with the care I need to relieve my suffering and have a dignified life. Other forms of abuse that abusers of persons with disabilities do is try to make victims believe that they are at fault for the abuse they are subjected to and falsely accusing victims of things they have not done. I have been wrongfully charged. The police and Crown ignore my medical records and ignore other evidence that reveal the abuse, forced starvation, and cruel 
inhumane and degrading treatment I suffered in the hospital. They also ignored that I was in extreme acidosis, that hospital staff harmed me, I was near death, and that I was suffering from severe gastroparesis that entire time too. The state is also taking advantage of my disabilities by not allowing me to fully participate in a trial and forcing me to be at a disadvantage during your version of a trial. The Crown is also mocking my disabilities by defending the care that the hospital was giving me and insinuating that I'm faking my illnesses and disabilities. This very serious and disgraceful topic has also warranted a conversation with the UN Special Rapporteur. Under the optional protocol, as the state is violating my rights, under Article 12, Equal Recognition Before the Law, and Article 13, Access to Justice of the Convention. Suffice it to say, there is something wrong with living with a disability in Canada on so many fronts, and this needs to be fixed immediately. There are fundamental flaws to equality laws and the rights of persons with disabilities to be treated with dignity in Canada. There are fundamental flaws with the Canadian healthcare system and the lack of any appropriate safeguards for vulnerable Canadians in the application of made laws. I reaffirm my petition that was ignored by the Canadian Justice Minister to place an immediate moratorium on all assisted deaths until proper safeguards and proper services to live are put in place and to organize an immediate public inquiry into the circumstances of my case and others similarly situated. The government of Canada, the provinces and institutions need to receive impartial third-party recommendations from the United Nations on how to safely integrate MAID into the Canadian healthcare system to ensure all Canadians have equal access to life-affirming services as they now do life-ending services, especially in terms of safeguards for vulnerable Canadians such as myself, and how to treat persons with disabilities appropriately so that Canada complies with the Convention and does not exploit nor harm its disabled citizens. All persons' lives have equal value and should be zealously protected and permitted to thrive and blossom in Canada. We need to have more legislative mechanisms that provide assistance with life, living with dignity and appropriate safeguards. My legal case to ensure proper treatment of disabled persons in Canada and internationally continues and I realize that the outcome of my challenge within the courts to require that all efforts to provide assisted life before offering assisted death has wide-reaching ramifications for others. I am very thankful for all the public support from caring individuals both in Canada and globally. I thank my lawyer Ken J. Berger for his excellent work so far to get me self-directed funding, but there is still so much work that remains as my case is far from being over. The cons for legal fees do not show signs of living up anytime soon, so I've had to set up a GoFundMe page at www.gofundme.com slash assisted life. Funds received from this account will be used to help me pay for the mounting legal expenditures. Any funds unused at the end of the legal expenditures will be donated to organizations that support survivors of abuse and neglected persons with disabilities. I will provide periodic updates on assistedlife.ca. Thank you very much for your time. Sincerely, Roger Foley.